Hi, this is Scott Kilo, Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee. And today I was uh, I was getting ready to start my review on the Yaesu VX6 that I've been promising for a while now. And in doing so, I had to go to one of my threat level midnight bags and pull out um, one of my load bearing kits in order to get to the VX6. And while I had it out on the table, I thought, well, now might be a good time to show um, some of the stuff I've done in terms of setting up because I've talked in generalities about things like uh, radio pouches and that DIY headset and where to place your mic on your carrier and how to route wires and stuff but I thought this would be a good a physical example to to kind of bring those concepts home and also I wanted uh, to discuss before I get into talking about you know what I think I did right um, I'd also like to talk a little bit about what a lot of people do wrong in terms of utilizing radios on load bearing kit. And uh, I just happened to pull the Beofang out. It's <laughs> again, not an intentional hit on Beofang, but a lot of people tend to uh, really like the UV5R because that clip is just perfect for clipping onto a piece of Molly. Hey, that's great, fantastic. Uh, and it does work. For, for that purpose and and as a as a very hasty method I suppose it it works but the problem is it's not a very serious approach to employing tactical communications gear on a plate carrier um, to begin with any reliance on a belt clip alone to keep your gear in place is foolish thought they are at best recreational and uh, designed to clip onto a pocket or a belt for someone who is just kind of fiddling around or futzing around the house with a radio. This is not meant for a hard use application. And I'm hoping the camera can pick up on this, but I'm gonna give this belt clip just a little bit of sideways torque. And do you see how that belt clip's starting to displace? Already it's bending and getting ready to let go. And I'm not even applying that much pressure to the clip. I can tell you from having broken a number of these things, they are flimsy in the extreme. They move around quite a lot. Um, and they snap off very easily because Beofang uses particularly brittle plastic. But this would apply to any number of other radios with belt clips. There's very few belt clips out there that could survive something like that. One that I could think of right off the top of my head would be uh, an FT60, but the belt clip is so wide it won't actually fit through Molly. So it sort of self-limits people from even doing that in the first place. I'm sure you could clip it onto some other part of your equipment, but the idea here is why are we clipping our radios onto our load carrying kit? If we really think we're going to be using this gear, if we really think we're going to be fighting with this gear, if we call our stuff our fighting load carrier, for instance, why on earth would we do something like that? The whole intent of all of this, all of these Molly pouches is to keep your gear in place so it's there when you get to the fight and it's there throughout the fight and it stays with you after the fight. So. Doing something like clipping, just clipping a radio on, honestly, I call it an afterthought approach. And it's it's like this. I, I used to get paid to assess people for a living. And I assess people in terms of threat levels, capabilities, etc. It was my kind of my thing. I'm pretty good at sizing up people and determining how serious they are about fighting. And I often can look at a person the way they have their gear set up, and I can tell you right off the bat, they don't actually think they're ever going to use this stuff. They, it's all pretty theoretical, and it's kind of some pretty advanced and lethal cosplay, if at best. The people that are serious about this stuff have their gear squared away. Now, if you, and I guess another way to look at it too would be people that, and I was there once. I was a real inexperienced, uh, inexperienced kid early on, and, and did some goofy stuff. And I was fortunate enough to have people slap me upside the head and say, stop doing that. You're being, you're being ridiculous. And it, it will alienate people when you say things like that. But you know what? They take the lesson, or hopefully they take the lesson, and they develop, and, and they get better at what they're doing. But it reveals also a, a real lack of a, a, a tactician's mindset, strategic thinking, that kind of stuff, where... Look, if, if you, I'm going to use a piece of gear, I try to think that through to its logical conclusion. If I'm evaluating something, I think, okay, well, you know, uh, if I'm in this situation, will this piece of equipment work, on and on. I play things out as, as much as I can without, you know, paralyzing myself into indecision, but I really try to think things through um, and, and really, really consider. Also, too, live experience helps a lot in determining what works and what doesn't work, but getting back to the concept of just clipping on, and I could show you 
endless pictures of people doing this where they just have it just clipped onto a plate carrier and I'm sure you've seen the same thing too. Again, that tells me it's somebody that's new to this, it's a new piece of kit, or they're not too serious about using it, um, and they haven't obviously thought it all the way through because if they get into a punch up, this radio's gone. You start fighting with somebody and rolling around on the ground, this radio's, this clip's coming off, and this radio's skittering across the concrete, and you are done. But there's some other things that reveal kind of a lack of a tactical mindset. And I had a couple of pictures, and I'll just illustrate it here. And in one case, the, the radio quite literally was clipped here. And mind you, this is a right-handed shooter. So this would be his shoulder pocket that he's going to be raking across. Now, the shoulder strap, your shoulder pocket is actually to this side of the shoulder strap. But if you're transitioning your weapon up, why would you want to skip your, your, the buttstock of your rifle off of this? And then when you go to cheek up, what's between the, the cheek of the, the stock and, uh, and your face? It's this radio. So obviously they haven't thought that through. So if they have to shoulder the weapon, they're going to run into a problem right away. They might have, if they have thought it through, not done that. But the other thing I noted from that, that picture was this. And we have... Well, hopefully it shows up. Uh, frequency set. Now I've I've got just the call frequencies for ham radio, 146420 and 441000. But if you have your radio clipped to your Molly and it's it's, it's exposed here, and there's a particularly infamous website that uh, took a lot of uh, pictures from the uh, Malhu or Malher refuge, a wildlife refuge that incident that happened in Oregon a couple of years ago, uh, where those uh, people kind of uh, occupied. Um, a national or national wildlife refuge. Um, a lot of them were running around with bayo fangs clipped to their plate carriers and whatnot. Didn't see a, I don't think I saw a single pouch being used. Um, but one thing that was pretty evident was they had their frequency sets displayed on the radio. And wouldn't you think that might be a problem? Now, granted, if any if any intel assets are listening to to what you're doing, they can get your comms pretty easy. But why make it easier? If, for instance, in, in these, again, referring to the festivities of, of last summer, uh, if you don't think that, uh, that there weren't undercover assets out there walking around and just kind of sizing everybody up and eyeing them and seeing what's going on, if you don't think they were taking note of the frequency sets that were being displayed on these radios, you're fooling yourself because they were. Um, an, uh, an advantage that a pouch would give you is not only protection of the radio, not only making the radio uh, or keeping the radio secure uh, under rigorous conditions, but also things like keeping the, uh, keeping the screen covered up for a couple of reasons. Uh, we didn't necessarily design this as a, as a, uh, a ComSec uh, issue. Uh, we designed it so that when the display lights up, uh, which it will sometimes if you haven't if you haven't taken the precaution of killing it There still are some functions that may actually light up on the front um, So that isn't uh, an issue it covers that but again also it protects the entire front panel area and protects the screen from damage uh, And again as I said being a solid secure ruggedly built pouch attached properly to a molly carrier This thing's going to stay in place before this pouch comes off this radio will be reduced to complete rubble within the contents of the pouch that's that's just it. So this is going to make sure your pouch at least or your radio at least stays in one spot. But so things like clipping your radios on uh, again, not not a great idea. If you're if you're serious about doing this stuff, if you're serious about setting your gear up, you need to have a pouch, whether it's a belt pouch or whether it's a, a Molly type pouch. You can get both. And the best in the industry right now, and I'll toot my own horn, is the Spectre Gear radio pouch. There are others out there, but things to to watch out for are pouches that have a hard plastic buckle for your uh, your pouch closure. If you think about it, right on the if there's a hard plastic buckle right there, between on the other side of this pouch is your front panel, your screen, your keys. If you happen to have to drop down and take a prone position or you bump into something, do you necessarily want something that's going to transfer that force through the pouch onto the front panel of the radio? Uh, I, I would say not, and that's why this pouch is designed with a soft Velcro closure, and there's nothing here that's going to make things worse than they are should you happen to bump into something or have to take a low position. Um, 
other other features of the pouch it'll accommodate now this vx6 is a has a top mounted uh port for your speaker mic but these are sized out also so that if you have a side mount uh, the pouch is expandable this elastic strap here basically allows the pouch to expand or contract based on whatever peripheral pieces you have attached to the radio so it's a good piece of kit and that would be a good starting point um, get a good radio to begin with get a decent pouch to put it in the next thing is going to be a speaker mic because you don't want to have to be taking the radio in and out of the pouch constantly in order to talk on it you want to have some kind of remote mic and that would be the the very first step and the good news on all of this is take the cost of the radio out of the equation the mics are not that expensive yesu factory mics and this is a calm mountain i have uh, yesu recently came out with a with a pretty decent mic i have a couple of yesu uh, brand mics for the VX6, but I don't like them. Uh, one is really great. It's submersible, but it has no provision for uh, for porting an earpiece in. So it kind of takes it out of the equation for me. I, I would only use it under certain circumstances. But the, uh, hang on just a second. The the good news is the uh, the SSM series mics that they have now for the uh, for the FT65 and the uh, the single pin uh, applications for like the FT60, FT70, FT3, FT5. Uh, it's a it's an excellent mic. They now make that for the VX6, and it is uh, it's not uh, IP67. I believe it's IP54, but it is weather resistant. In the meantime, though, the Calm Mountain mic has served me well, and then we lead out from there. And uh, another thing I'll note here, I took one of these little Grimlock clips, and what I've done is one thing you're going to run into running a speaker mic on a carrier is you're going to have this cord is going to be flopping around because usually people are going from uh, the shoulder or lapel to the belt. So they size these cords out for that distance. Obviously, we're only talking uh, a, a fraction of that distance. So you're going to have some extra cordage. I take this little Grimlock and I lock this out so it kind of, I, I leave myself some expandability here in case I need to dismount this and talk on it for some reason. But uh, I take the excess and I kind of keep it uh, to my offside towards the rear of my carrier. And it's worked pretty good for that. And then I have, uh, coming off of the speaker mic, of course, I have this uh, flexible cord that I showed when I was talking about the DIY headset that goes into that headset. Now, of course, as I mentioned during that, the headset may or may not be used. It depends on the circumstances. If I was, uh, if I was in a, a heavy crowd situation with a lot of distracting noises, I might run the headset during that for the duration of the event just because I want to be able to mute out some of those sounds in order to hear radio traffic. Um, but if I was uh, if I was in a situation where maybe I was creeping through the woods or something, I may not necessarily want to have that headset for a couple of reasons. It gives you an artificial balance on the sound that you're getting. Um, it, it, For instance, if you don't get that, that sensation, if you hear something naturally through your ears and knowing that, okay, that sound came from my you know, my seven o'clock position. Um, with this, it's sort of more everything seems to come from the front and I, I don't really care for that. So if I had to be relying on my ears and in this utility pouch, I keep uh, one of these uh, air tube coil set up, setups and this whole thing can be changed out in just a couple of seconds. Well, not seconds, a couple of minutes actually, because I'm gonna need to unplug, pull this cable, plug this one in, run it through. But it, again, it takes not a heck of a lot of time. It obviously wouldn't be something you would do in the middle of a gunfight, of course. It, you're going to do this when you have downtime to set it up. But it allows me to have a scalable system. And then talking about that mic placement, and this is something that I, I see a lot of mistakes being made in terms of people running speaker mics. A lot of times I see them running it up here on the offside upper shoulder area. And admittedly... Um, I used to, you see this a lot in law enforcement. Guys will uh, will clip the mic to their, their left lapel. And a lot of that is because there's not really much to clip onto on the front. But when I ran a speaker mic on my HT-1000 when I worked for the county, uh, I actually tried to clip whenever I could to the actual front of my shirt. And that way uh, I could do... I could do then what I do now, and that is if I have to speak, all I need to do to get into this mic is just key up and talk. If I want to be definitely heard or, or if, I, if I need to be quiet, I can just dip my chin down and talk. But the important thing is I can do that with my head facing this way or this way. I can just dip my chin down and still get through pretty clearly. 
Whereas if it's on this side, in order to be heard, especially at a lower volume, your head always has to be turned to the left. Now, if you're shouldered up on your rifle, you're viewing something and you want to keep cheeked up and ready to go, you don't want to break your cheek well, then have to keep turning your head to the left in order to talk. So it's just something to think about. Maybe think of relocating that mic to the cent upper center of your carrier. It's a more efficient way. And furthermore, it doesn't interfere with cross-shoulder transitions. Um, something from a, a shooter's perspective is the ability to move your buttstock from one shoulder to another should be as unimpeded as possible. Anything that's up high on the chest like this, you're going to be skipping your buttstock off of. This is a fairly low profile. Um, I, can, I can get that out of the way, but I find that if the mic is up here, there's a couple of things I can get tangled up in. And one of the things I can get tangled up in, of course, is, is striking the mic as I cross to the other side. But also, I could end up catching, if this cord is coming up in this direction, I can actually catch the buttstock on that cord and start pulling the cord and the mic and everything into my shoulder pocket, which is something to think about. So this is all part of, of you know, you put your gear together, work with it, see what works for you, see what doesn't work for you, and just kind of flesh it out. This is, this is a distillation of experiences I've had over the years, and this particular setup currently works for me. But it's, it's just a few ideas that I wanted to share, just some thoughts to, uh, you know, some stuff for you to think about and consider as you're running this stuff. But first things first, you know, be professional in, in your outlook and approach. Be tactical and be, be mindful of what you're doing in, in terms of setting up your gear. It's good for you in the long run because it's going to make you a better and more effective person in what you're doing. But also, you're not going to be showing to the rest of the world that you're kind of either young and inexperienced or ill-trained or you're just not taking things seriously. Take this stuff seriously. If you think you're going to actually use this gear, set it up, work with it, play with it, and make sure that it works. And don't just go off of what you've seen other people do. Because a lot of times what you've seen other people do isn't necessarily the greatest thing in the world. So those are just a few thoughts I thought I'd throw out there. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up at this point. And uh, as I said, I'll, I'll probably break the belt, belt kit out later uh, in another video and show you kind of how I have that set up because there are a few different considerations. Um, and, and I'll talk about how that integrates with this particular kit and why I've done some of the things I've done with that. So with that, I'm going to bring it to a close. And the VX6, as you can see, I got I got it out and it's ready to go. So that VX6 video is coming in, uh, in short order. So with that, I'll bring it to a close and say thank you for listening. 73s, Kilo Series 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, clear.